Hello and welcome to Money Pile Monday where I am slowly but surely turning my death pile into dollars. And I'm going to show you 20 items that I have listed from my death pile and hopefully it'll get sold. This video is going to be the last 20 item video, uh, mostly because of the fact that I have missed a couple of these Money Pile Mondays. So the next few Money Pile Mondays we we'll all have 30 items because more is more. And again, we're trying to make sure by the end of the year, I have over a thousand items listed from my death pile. So I'm going to give you to other Bob and she's gonna show you what I actually got listed. <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first item I'm gonna show you is this Spartina 44, nine, 449. I don't know what this is actually called. This is the brand, all right? If you see a big purse or a wallet that looks like this, like a, a kid drew a map, the bags, like the large bags, actually sell for quite a bit. Um, this is a leather bag. If you get the ones where it's just full on embroidery, those are the most valuable. But this is brand new with tags. I paid a dollar for this at the bins. Because it's brand new with tags, I went ahead and listed it for this amount of money which is about what it costs, but these are sold out. So we'll see what I actually get for it. I was so excited. This was actually in the book bin at, <laughs> at the bins. So I was super stoked and I was surprised that no one, one, no one had picked this up and two, that it was still in amazing shape. So, because books tend to be dirty at the bins. <laughs> so I was really happy that that got thrown in the wrong bin and I was able to find that and scoop it up for a dollar. This next piece is a vintage piece. This is Jack Winter, which is a decent, uh, actually designer, vintage designer for you to look out for. They're uh, like his mod 60s and like really like outlandish 70 pieces are way more valuable. But Jack Winter is a good brand to look for if you're interested in selling vintage. This is from the 70s. It has a tie. I. I mark this as you can either use it as a pussy bow or you could use it around your waist if you're that thin or you could use it as a hair tie. It's not a set stand. I'm, I'm sure that this was something that's supposed to go around your neck, but I decided to go ahead and list this. This, it came to me in that giant vintage haul. I'm just, I'm trying to pick and choose what I can and cannot list out of there. So the reason why I hadn't listed this yet, because it had a big yellow stain on the back of one of these arms, but I was able to get that out. So it's now perfect and it can move on to a new home. Speaking of needing stain treatment, this is a Don Kenny. This is also from the seventies. This is a silk polyester blend uh, blazer. It's a two button blazer with these big front patch pockets. I thought it was linen at first because of the way it feels, but it is a silk polyester blend. Uh, this says it's a 1314, but that is a vintage 1314. This, I have very broad shoulders. So this actually, I can put this on, but I cannot move my arms. So I would get, it's like a medium large, just depending on like how you're built. So I put measurements in the listing. This had a giant pink stain on the back of it, but it is now gone as you can see. So that is why I hadn't listed this one. It's because it needed stain treatment, but now it is listed because I stain treated it. This, another thing that had both stains that I had to get out and also needed mending. And I did that for a reason. So I have mentioned before on this channel that I am more than happy to sew on buttons or replace buttons especially with vintage pieces. Um, this is a vintage J. Crew jacket. This is a men's size large and is this size size? Yep, the men's size large. It is flannel lined, as you can see in here, nice plaid flannel. It has the corduroy spread collar. So it is a spread collar because you see that the two ends of the collar here don't touch. So if it is like this, that is a point collar. If it's like this, it is a spread collar. And this is a chore jacket. It's just like, you could you could totally picture a farmer going out in some like boots, and by boots I mean like waterproof boots to go feed his pigs or 
feed her cows or go milk them or something like that. This is a chore jacket. And this is a vintage piece. And I actually had to buy replacement buttons for the front. So these big, big buttons, these are all brand new. And I did that because this jacket was actually missing two of the buttons. So I took, I removed the two buttons that were on here and I went to Joann's <laughs> because that's the closest place that sells buttons for me. And I went around and I tried to figure out where the match was and I went and I bought a bunch of buttons. So the buttons cost like $5 for me because Joanne always has coupons. So I spent $5 for this jacket at the thrift store and then I paid $5 for new buttons. And then of course I did the buttons. And the reason why is because of how much I can list it for. So these are currently selling between 40 and you know, $80. It just depends on the size and like the style. So the ones that are a different color than this, the beige one seems to be like in the lower end, but there are some navy and some black ones that are doing better. But I will definitely do a $10 investment for something that I could possibly sell for more. I've already received a offer of $30 for this, which I of course declined. If you're giving me like a half off offer and I just newly listed it, I'm not countering. I'm just I'm not dealing with you, <laughs> so I just declined it. We'll see if that was a mistake or not, but I, I have every faith that this will sell. It's a decent brand. This is a workwear style, and I am personally very pleased. This also had, um, it looked like they had set in something, but it's it had stains back here, but again, just like with the other things, I was easily able to take that out. It just needs some stain treatment. So I have repaired this and stain treated it so it can find a new home. And I'm really, really pleased with that piece. Now, I also have a giant bucket of plush and you might be like, but you never sell plush. I don't, <laughs> but I will if it is worth it. And all of this was free. So my friend Donna, who has been on the channel when I was doing uh, style try-ons, uh, she, her mom was getting rid of stuff and I tell my friends and my family what I do and because of that they give me free stuff to resell because they love me and it's appreciated. So she had all these Mickey Mouse things from when she went to Mickey Disney World, Disney World, when she in the Y2K era. So she, I think she went to Disney World in like the year 2000. So almost all of these are Millennium Mickeys. So a lot of them still have their tags attached. This is just a big 12 inch plush with a picture frame. It still has the original plastic in it. It's just, I had to clean the plastic and then it has like a little bit of a bend right here. I don't know if you can see it. A little bit of a bend right here. I just closed that. This does not have a tag attached to it, but I went ahead and listed that. This is Fantasia Mickey. He is 15 inches tall. Uh, doesn't have tags attached to it no big deal. I went ahead and listed them. And then there's one more on here that doesn't have a tag attached. Or did I put that in the wash? I think I put that one in the wash because he needed some stain treatment. All right. Everybody else in this basket has a tag attached. Um, and a couple of them are a little bit sun damaged, which is this one. Uh, this is the Mickey Mouse Club Millennia Mickey. And you know, it's a Millennia Mickey because it'll have this little Millennia tag down here at the bottom still has their tag attached, which made it really easy to list. I just scanned the barcode and then the, a listing popped up. And the way I say he's sun damaged is because you look at his eyeballs. If I drew some red lines in there, it would mean something else entirely. But what that is, is it just means that this Mickey was in some place in the sun, like either sat in a window or sat in an area where a lot of sun and it, it discolored the eyeballs. You'll see that a lot with clamshells as well. If you buy and resell toys, um, clamshells will yellow. There is a, it's not hydrogen peroxide, there's a hydrogen oxide, some kind of solution that uh, that can fix this, but it requires soaking and it can damage the rest of the item. So it's not really used in this situation. So I did disclose that his eyes are yellow from some damage and not for any other reason, but there's that one. And then the other one that had the same issue is this one. Again, his eyes are yellowed and you can tell what color he used to be, and that is some damage because of the fact that if you saw where his lapel was, this part of the button was covered, so it is not sun damaged. So I have this one as well. Now these ones are not, this one is not sun damaged. 
So we've got his eye there. His other, his eyes are not sun damaged. I think it's funny that they put a patch on him, but still gave him an eye. <laughs> so his eyes are fine, even though they're the same plastic. This is the pirate Mickey Beanie Baby. This is not a Millennia be be Beanie Baby, or Mickey, because he doesn't have the tag. The other two do. So I listed this one. This is the brave little tailor Mickey. He's a Millennia Mickey because he's got a little tag at the bottom. We have the Steamboat Willie Mickey, and he is a Millennium Mickey because he's got that little silver tag. So again, that makes it easy to identify if you got something that literally says the year 2000 there at the bottom. These are just regular black eyes. Pie eyes when you have this triangle cut out of it. This is a pie-eyed Mickey when they have the pie piece cut out. But yeah, he's another Millennial Mickey. So I have two with just the big black eyes. I have two with sun damaged eyes. I have one with an eye patch, and then I have one with pie eyes. But those were all free to me, which is why I was perfectly happy to list, especially since most of them were super easy to list due to the fact that I just scanned a barcode, took like three pictures and was done. Everything else for this set of 20 is going to be books. And this one is a genealogy book. It's brand new. It's The Family Tree. This came in out in, th in 2013 or 2014. Um, I think it's Mormons that are super into genealogy. I'm not 100% sure. Of course, just people in general are really into genealogy. It's like all about you. And then like you can talk about your mom and your dad and your grandparents and like put in pictures and stuff. Um, one of these already sold to my lovely friend Second, who you guys have I've talked about on this channel before. She's been a big supporter of just me being online in general. I will go back to Twitch eventually, <laughs> but she already purchased one. Um, I sent everyone off, uh, I think a 20, 15 or 20% off offer and she purchased it, which is awesome because she lives in Canada. So she had to pay the global shipping prices. So second, thank you. And I still have one up for sale and that is listed for 987. So I just, I had two of these, one already sold. And then this one is just going to go in my inventory. I also, we're just going to go ahead and talk about the other thing that sold because I have to ship this out. Uh, I also picked up this at the Benz. I picked up that at the Benz for 50 cents and I picked up these at the Benz for $2.50 because again, I have five books. So hardcovers are 50 cents each. This is the Spider Rick Chronicles and it is one through five and it's all the hardcovers. And this already sold. It sold for this price. I think it's also sold for $8.39. So am I making a big profit? No, but these books are not going in the landfill and that means a lot to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and ship these out and somebody is getting a deal because individually these books cost $9.95. So if you had wanted to buy these books as they were coming out, it would have cost $50, <laughs> which is insane. Also, this is by one of my favorite uh, YA authors, Holly Black. So it's it's by two different people, by Tony Deterlizzi Deter and Holly Black. I know Holly Black is because I think like the coldest girl in cold cold town is probably one of my f favorite YA novels and I'm so upset because it ended on a weird place and everybody thought that she was going to make a sequel to it and then she didn't so that was frustrating but that's uh something you don't really need to know about so I sold these and I'm happy that they moved on very quickly another new tag item that I picked up is this little pocket share Jesus I have mentioned in my how to successfully sell books without Amazon video that Jesus sells uh, and especially brand new Jesus. So this is uh, leather and there we go. I have this that's technically a soft cover. So that only costs 25 cents. Uh, this I was, I was so geeked when I found this, this is a Nintendo adventure book. This is the Pringles edition. So you actually got this for free if you turned in like two Pringles things. Like they had little things on the barcode and you can turn it in for these adventure books. So they have the Pringles special editions and then there's also this book that doesn't have the Pringles special edition on it. But this is Pipe Down. This has a ton of condition issues. It has a condition issue here on the spine where the spine is kind of like coming away some here. There is tape on the inside because this was like coming apart and there is also what looks like well there's somebody's writing I'm guessing this is in somebody's fifth grade class and then on the 49th chapter because this is a little chapter book this uh it looks like somebody was eating a fudge sickle 
and dripped it on the book, which is exactly what that looks like. <laughs> Uh, as fudge sickle was like their favorite childhood ice cream. That's fudge sickle staining. Um, you don't need to know that. But if you can get these books without all of those condition issues, if you can find this um, while you're out reselling or sourcing, if you can find these little adventure books in not this bad a shape, they can go from like 25 to $40. It just depends on the edition. If you can get a first edition number one, that's more like the $50 mark. But uh, Nintendo Adventure Books and Nintendo Power Books are really awesome kids books for you to resell. So mine, because mine's in such crap condition, I put it for this amount, but there are others listed and others sold in the $20 range. So, I mean, I feel like most resellers would see something with Mario and Luigi on it and see that it's vintage and still pick it up. So just, just be aware. I always check the kids sections for these adventure books and the power books, but I never find them. So this was really cool to find for a first time. This is something that uh, Donna gave me from her mom's stuff. This is a Virginia Historic Restaurants recipe book. And this is like new condition. I don't think she ever used it. The only problem is that the price was cut out of it for some reason, even though uh, you can still know how much the book cost. Uh, fun fact, I used to work at Barnes & Noble, and on the back of all modern books, the price is actually in the barcode. So you see how this says 51495? The original cost of this book was $14.95. So the last four digits on the top number of a UPC barcode is the actual price if you can't find something and you want to like the price and you want to quickly know how much something costs. That's how much it originally retails for was $14.95. I put it up for this. Um, it's just in such good shape and I've had great luck selling vintage cookbooks. So that's why I have picked that up. Uh, another free to me item because this came again from Donna. This is the New American Heart Association cookbook. This is brand new and this doesn't have any issues. It still has the $35 again. Just to reiterate, again, it has the 53500 because this costs $35. And this is brand new, so I'm selling it as brand new because it is brand new. And so this actually has a really nice track record on eBay, so hopefully someone will pick that up for me. And then another new item that I found is this yoga journal. I found this at the bins for 25 cents because it is a soft cover. This is a thick yoga journal by Linda Palmer Clark. And it's like, celebrate your life. It, it has so much in here. It's talking about today, I have a beautiful mind and I am, you're supposed to like have daily affirmations and like what you're doing throughout the day. This is like the most mindful journal I've ever seen. Like it is in depth of like yoga first, the rest of your day second. <laughs> but I saw that this, I think this originally retailed for, this doesn't have the five number on it, so I don't know. But looking online, it looked like this originally retailed for like $30. So this is what I'm selling it for. Hopefully this sells. Pretty much any journal I find that's in new condition at the bins, I will pick it up because I've had great success reselling them on eBay. So, and especially at 25 cents, that is like the lowest buy cost other than free. <laughs> so I'm really happy that these items are now listed and that they hopefully will get sold. Some of them have already sold. So now I'm going to give you to later on, Bob. Why am I talking about myself in third person? This is weird. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Hand you off. <laughs> Thank you, other Bob. So this is how much I have now added to my store in value from my death pile. So that is now no longer in my death pile and hopefully will become money in my pocket sooner rather than later. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, the next few Money Pile Mondays will be a little bit thicker um, to make up for the ones that I missed when I was a little depressed. So I will see you guys hopefully in the next video. Until then, bye. Bye. Hero, hero, I wanna be a hero, hero. Oh, the